So scientists such as Lavoisier and Dalton that we've mentioned saw patterns in the measurements that they made. Um, and so when you have a set of measurements, that's called data. So they look at the data, and you, it's a skill to be able to look at data and figure something out. You have to analyze it and interpret the data. Just a bunch of numbers doesn't tell us much of anything. Um, so we look for patterns in the data. And this is just a, a very short introduction to an analyzing data. So let's pretend that we're early chemists and we're trying to figure out what water is made of. So we know it's got hydrogen and oxygen in it, um, but that's all we know. So we do some experiments um, and we decompose the water and we measure the masses of the gases that are given off and the, the water that we started with. And so we get some data that looks like this. We had three different samples of, of water, 20 grams of water, 50 grams of water, 100 grams of water, and we broke it down into its elements and then we measured the mass of each element. So looking at that, do you see any patterns? It's a table of numbers, right? Yeah. So you, we, we often end up using some math. So let's look at these two numbers. What if we add 2.2 plus 17.8? That equals 20. Oh. What if we add 5.6 plus 44.4? That's 50. Well, look at that. 11.1 plus 88.9? 100 grams. That's a pattern. The mass of hydrogen and oxygen we get from a sample is equal to the mass of the original water sample. That tells us something. So that's a pattern. It's another pattern that's less obvious. So here are those uh, masses of the elements again. If we look at ratios of the masses, we take the mass of oxygen divided by the mass of hydrogen. It gives us a, a ratio of 8.1 for that sample, 7.9 for this sample, 8.01 for that sample. Now these numbers are not all exactly the same, but they're really, really close, aren't they? When we see, when we do an actual experiment, the numbers don't always come out perfectly because when we make measurements, there's always a small amount of error. So a scientist looks at these numbers and says, those are basically the same, that's eight. Okay, and so this also gives us some very important information. That's another pattern in the data. Seeing patterns does require some creativity um, sometimes thinking outside the box. And some of the greatest discoveries have been when an individual sees patterns in data that other scientists couldn't see. We use a lot of graphs in science um, because when you look at a, just a table of numbers, it can be very hard to see patterns. When you graph them, um, sometimes the patterns will show up. So here's a graph um, pertaining to atmospheric carbon dioxide. So when we look at a graph like this, we need to understand the parts of it. So we have the y-axis here, and an axis always needs a title. So here, this is carbon dioxide concentration, and then we need a unit. So this is measured in parts per million, and so then here, this represents 30, 300 parts per million up to 400 parts per million. On the x-axis, we have the year when the measurement was taken. And so the points have been graphed, and we show that it shows that there's this increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere over the course of many years. There's more information in here. We can look at the slope of the line here. This is a much steeper slope than it is over here, which means that the rate of increase is greater in these later years than it was in the earlier years. And looking at data in this way, can help us to come up with hypotheses that can be tested so that we can figure out why this is happening. Notice on this graph that um, where the x and y axis 
intercept here is not at 0, 0. And that's done because if we put this at 0, 0, this part of the graph would be a little tiny part up here, and it would be hard to see. So it's always important that the, the axes be labeled with the numbers here. Um, the book goes into um, more detail about how to use a graph. You should have learned this in a math class somewhere along the way. You may have forgotten it, but uh, go over that section in the textbook and it should come back to you. I thought I had a problem there, but I didn't. <laughs>